This video is another part of a series on problem solving aspects of the Higher Human Biology course. So I'm going to cover a few points on this one. It'll be a shorter video than some of the other ones. So it's basically pulling conclusions and statements and trends from graphs. Okay, and the majority of them that I'm going to do will be multiple choice questions because a lot of these are multiple choice questions. So the first one I'm going to do will be 2017 multiple choice question two. And then I'll focus on the 2018 paper with two multiple choice questions, 11 and 20, and then question 10e part 1 from section B of 2018. <clears throat> okay, so first question I'm going to pop up is 2017, and it's question 2. So you'll notice this is a double y-axis graph. So if you've watched that previous video that I've, um, I've done about double y-axis graphs, you remember that you need to highlight the y-axis of each, um, each side, and then make sure... Oops, that you have highlighted the units and the values in it too. Okay, so this one here on the right hand side is the frequency of cases with number per 100,000. Here's your values. And then the frequency is this line. Okay, the other y axis then is this number of new cases with your values here. And your number then would be the bars that are on this. So with these questions about making conclusions, you really have to spend some time eliminating the wrong ones and picking the correct ones. So take your time with these questions. They're straightforward marks to get if you don't rush them. So the question is asking which of the following conclusions can be drawn from the graph? So it's the first one then, so rule it out or find it correct, depending on which one is the case. It says the highest frequency of cases within the population was the 70 to 74 year old age group. So we're looking at frequency here. And we're looking at which point on this line is the highest. Now this highest one here is on the 85 plus group. So that means that this one is not correct. For B, it says, as the age group increases, the frequency of the cases within the population always increases. Now, if we have a look at the frequency, it looks generally like it always increases, but there's a point here where it stays the same between these two age groups, between the 75 to 79 and the 80 to 84. So that's not always the case, because there's a point where it stays the same. Okay, the next question then was, our next part of this question was, when there was 4,800 new cases, the frequency of cases within the population was 600 per 100,000. So when there are 4,800 new cases, so number of new cases here, 4,800 is this box just below 5,000. We're looking to see which bar it meets, and it's this one here. So when the age group is 60 to 64, which is 4,800, it's stating that the population frequency is 600. So we look at the frequency, it's here, and if you draw that line over, that line is actually meeting 300. So that makes this one incorrect too, which makes D correct. Now just to double check that that is the case, the greatest increase in the number of new cases between consecutive age groups occurred between 55 to 59 and 64. So if you look at the gap between these two bars, That's actually the largest increase compared to any of the other bars. So it's actually larger than this increase and larger than this increase. So yes, that one would be correct. Okay, so that's the 2017 paper done. The next question is 2018 and it'll be another multiple choice question. So it'll be question 11 from that 2018 paper. So this one is talking about fast and slow twitch muscle fibers in athletes. Um, for training for different distances. So again, it's which of the following conclusions can be drawn from this graph. So again, you might want to then highlight which one is which just to make it a bit clearer for you. So slow twitch will be this lighter grey bar, the one that I'm colouring in pink. And the fast twitch is quite dark, so I'm not really going to be able to colour that in there to highlight it. But the fast twitch is the other one. You won't be able to really see that. 
but for most bars you'll be able to do it through your own exam paper. So again we do the same as we did before. So we rule out the incorrect ones and we find the correct one. So this is not always the case, but often it is the case that the later ones are the ones that are correct because you have to work your way through and it has to take time for you to identify the correct one. So often, not always, but often the correct answer will be the later ones like the previous example in D. Okay, so A, athletes who train for a 100 metre event have five times more fast than slow. So we're looking at a 100 metre event they have five times more fast, now their fast is 80, than slow. Their slow is 20. Now 80 is not five times more than 20. Okay, it's actually four times. So that would rule out this one. Okay, for B, the athletes who trained at 10,000 metres, in case we're using this one here, have four times more slow than fast. So 10,000 meters, slow first of all, would be 75. And their fast is 25. Now again, that's not four times, that's three times. Okay, so we can rule out B. Athletes that train for the 800 meter have twice as many slow than the athletes in the 1500s. So we're looking at 800 and 1500 now. And we're looking at the slow twitch fibers, so the pink bars. So 800 has 60. Okay. And then the 1500 event has 70. So that is not twice as many. Okay, so we can rule that one out. So that means that D would be correct, but we'll double check it. So athletes who have trained for the 100 metre event have twice as many fast as the athletes in the 800 metres. So we're looking at, this time, the 100 metres and the 800 metres. So 100 metres, fast twitch. So fast twitch is 80. Okay, and then the athletes in the 800 metres, fast twitch is 40. So yes, that is twice as high. Okay, so that made that one correct. So the next question from this 2018 paper I'm going to do is still the multiple choice and it'll be question 20. So again you'll recognise this is a double y-axis graph. It talks about hospital hand washing and the introduction of that in terms of number of, inf of infections. So I highlight the Infection Y, which is on the right hand side of this Y axis, as the shaded bars. Now again, this might not come across so clearly in your screen, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be doing that in your paper. Okay, the cases of infection X, I'm going to have as yellow. Now for this, be aware again of your units, and that's always the case for any graph, particularly for y-axis, double-axis graphs. Okay, so this is per 100 patients, this is per 100 patients. So, part A, I'm going to move this up. So, the cases of both infection fell by 50% over the five years. So, it's asking for which one is not correct this time. So, both infections. So, if we start off with infection X, this value here is 0 0.64. So x goes from 0 0.64 down to, at the last possible stage in the five years, this point here, which is 0 0.32. That is a drop of 50%. Okay, For y, we're doing the same thing. So looking at the cases here, it's gone from 15. Okay. And it's gone down to uh, seven and a half, which means that is a drop of 50%. Okay, so this is still absolutely correct. So those have both dropped by 50%, so therefore A is correct. For B, the number of cases of infection Y 
was always greater than the number of cases of infection X. So this one is actually one that people tend to have a look just very simply at and they don't look at the scales. So if you look at infection Y, without looking at the scales, Y is always lower. Okay? So people would immediately go, oh, well, X is always higher, Y is always below that in the bar, so therefore that one is wrong. But if you look at the values, Y's values are 5, 10, 15, and 20. They are all higher than these, which are 0 point something. So actually, this is 0 0.64, but the value of Y is 15. Okay, this is 0 0.6, but the value of Y would be something like 13. Okay, so actually these are all always greater. Y is always greater than X. So for C, the highest number of cases of infection X is 0 0.62. Well, Y is 15 per 100. So cases of infection X. So highest, you look at infection X, is the yellow one. That would be 0 0.6 something, but it's not 0 0.62. This is where people get tricked. The scale is actually 0.6 to every one box. Okay, so this would be 0 0.62, then 0 0.64, 66, 68, and then 0 0.7. So that value is actually 0 0.64. So that makes this one incorrect. So C is incorrect. Okay, Y is 15, um, because the highest value here is 15. So that one would be correct, because the X point is not correct. Okay, and then just to prove this, D is correct, the lowest number of cases of infection X is 0 0.3. So infection X, 0 0.3, that's your lowest bar, so yes. Well, the lowest cases of number of infection Y was 6. So infection Y is the orange bar, this is your lowest bar, and this is your value here, which is 6. So the one that is not correct is C. Okay, so there's a lot to juggle in these questions. Now the last question I'm going to do is a main section question, which is from 2018, and it is question 10e part 1. So again, this is another graph question, and it talks about adult smokers and age groups in the UK in 2011. Now this question is asking you to describe two trends from the graph. So what you're looking for is what is changing, what is different amongst those groups. So the two different factors are age and then six. So what you would want to have a look at is the differences between age, or what happens when age increases, and then what happens when it's different between sexes. So if we look at males compared to females first, so just to kind of show you the difference, I know it won't be very clear in the dark bar, but I'll use this lighter bar and colour it in orange. The orange is the female. So if you look at males in the dark bars compared to the females, there's a higher percentage of smokers in males in all the age groups. Okay, so and this is where it's really key, in all age groups. And this is underlined in the marking instructions. So in all age groups, there's a higher percentage of male smokers. Okay, now I'm trying to squish this into lines because there's actually more than two trends that you can pick. Now you can obviously see the inverse. So in all age groups, there is a lower percentage of female smokers. So you could do it either, either way, but they would count for the same point. So this would be one mark. The next one, what you might want to have a look at is then the, as age increases, what's the pattern? So if we look at males, as age increases, males increase and then decrease. Okay, so in males, would be your second point. And again, you have to state that it's males. The percentage of smokers Increases, and you should see to which age group. So this is a 25 to 34 age group. And then decreases. 
Okay, that'd be another point. Now your third available trend in this question has to do with the females in their age. Okay, so as age, as age increases, sorry, females, their percentage of females who are smokers always drops. It goes from 19.9 .9 to 0.2 to 18, etc, etc. So as age increases, so again, you're looking for a trend, it's a pattern here, so you have to see as something increases or something does something, something else will do something else. So as age increases, so that X value increases, the percentage of female smokers decreases. And that be another available point. Then notice how you cannot say all smokers, because not all smokers decreased. The males decreased only after they increased up this time. So you couldn't say that all smokers decreased, or the percentage of all smokers decreased, because that's not the case. Okay, so that covers some conclusions and trends and things from graphs.